Hi, it's Colin Jennings from Jeepin.net. Today we're going to be installing some spacers on our 2000, 2007 Grand Cherokee. Um, this is my daily drive. I reckon, don't normally recommend spacers. I normally recommend the properly backspaced rims. But in this case, this was the most economical um, and the right thing for me to do today. I want to keep this vehicle as stock looking as possible for a few different reasons. Um, and this just made the most sense. And the big reason I don't normally recommend these is there's three big reasons that they go wrong. The first is they are installed wrong. Um, they need to be properly torqued down and installed to a very clean, clean surface. Uh, and I'll explain um, as I'm installing these why that is and, and how you make sure they're properly torqued. The other reason is is that people don't buy the hub-centric ones. This one's hub-centric. You see there's a hub, there's a hub-centric rim right here. So the actual weight of the vehicle will actually mostly sit. Oops, sorry mostly sit right on the uh, on on that and that's going to make sure that it's centered you'll notice that there's actually wiggle room here that's because the weight is of the vehicle is not actually sitting on these studs the studs are to hold it squeeze it in it's doing your lateral force the actual up and down force is more done by 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 the hub centric ring um you'll notice this has it that has it so some of the early spacers did not have that if you're getting spacers and you have hub centric Definitely make sure you 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 get these, or else you will have wall foam problems. The other thing is bad manufacturing. Make sure you go with a quality spacer. Uh, I'm not going to get into who made these ones um, because I'm not necessarily a huge fan of this company, but um, they will do the job this time around. Um, and I went through a caliber when I first got this and made sure it's completely smooth everywhere. Um, you also want to make sure your studs are in good shape and you want to make sure the studs on here are in good shape. I'm actually going with brand new lug nuts as well. Since these are new studs, um, I figured it's a good time to put new new lug nuts on as well. So we'll get on with the install and I'll show you guys a proper way to install these. Okay, we're now gonna go ahead and install our front wheel spacer. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure we have a really good clean surface to mount. I can feel a few little high spots here. So I have a wire brush. I'm just gonna go around the whole thing to give it a good clean, clean my um, calibers, sorry, calibers, clean my uh, studs, make sure everything's in good order. Um, these ones all look like they're in pretty good order. There was one in the back that I'm gonna replace um, in the end. There's a little bit of rust starting to go on on it. Um, so time to get that done. So now that we have a nice clean maiden surface, what I'm going to do, because I live in an area of a lot of rust and I've had to deal with it in the past, I'm actually going to put some anti-seize just around my rim. I'm not going to worry about the actual uh, going around the router too much, rotor. Um, we're just going to go put a nice a little bit around here. This will just help me down the road when I need to take these off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and put a nice bead around the inside of this as well. We don't want too much because we don't want it to affect our maiden surface. It's all about having a nice good contact. Um, but this is going to help you a lot down the road. Okay, so now that that's done, we're going to plop her on. Make sure we're all over the rim. Okay, good. We're going to check to see how firm this feels. So it feels good. I don't have any wobble anywhere. feels nice and flat. So now that we have that on, you can see how I do have back and forth room. That's a, that's a separate, but I have no up and down, no back and forth, because it's on that rim. It, that's very important, um, and that's why you really want hub-centric spacers. So we're also going to go with a red, red Loctite. Uh, the reason for that is this can be a high heat area because of the calibers and the brakes. So we're going to go and put uh, some on the top item here. A little hard to see. Okay, none than a whole lot. Um, so what we want to do is we want to put these on just finger tight until I start to feel a little bit of resistance and I want to stop. So now I have all of my bolts on just finger tight. I want to go right, get around again in the star pattern, see if I can get them finger tight again. All right, now I want to see if I have any wiggle anywhere. No, nope, it's feeling really quite firm. So now what I want to do is I want to take a wrench, not a very big one, and I just want to 
firm them up again until I get a little bit of there, a little bit of, bit of um, pressure. So I'm going to stop. Come in here. Oh, no pressure. So come in. Oh, a little bit of pressure. Okay. Come over here. No pressure. So I'm going to those now down, kind of, kind of a little tight, but not very tight. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that my mountain surface here, I have nothing protruding. So you want to rush your hand over, make sure that the stud's not coming out, the bolt's not coming out. I know that this is good. My studs aren't even coming out, out of the bolts yet. Uh, they will as I start torquing them down. The back, they stuck out a little further, but not, not too bad. Uh, <coughs> I'm sorry. I do just want to check again. I am looking nice and nice and firm here. So what, now what I want to do is I want to grab my torque wrench. <coughs> and I want these ultimately, ultimately to be down to... I want them to be down to 100. So what I want to set this to now is 80. 80, right on. And I want to grab my bit. I'm going to use this one. If I um, end up with the wheel spinning too much, I, I, I will put a breaker bar on it. So I'll go here at the top. We're going to just snug it down until we start feeling too much resistance. Now, I'm not going to click it, but I'm feeling a lot of resistance, so I'm going to stop. Move down this bolt. Yeah, that's feeling good. So now what I want to do is I want to bring the torque wrench up to my final, which is going to be 100. There we go. So I'm going to follow my pattern again. Again, if I start feeling too much torque, I will back off. No, doesn't feel right. Okay. Okay, so I'm at 100 there now. There, so I'm just gonna go around once more. Okay. Okay. So I'm 100 the whole way around. Everything's good there. So now what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna again make sure everything's flush here. I don't have anything protruding. Everything looks good. Make sure my studs are still nice and clean. Since these are new studs, I'm actually going to go with uh, new new lug nuts. Good time to go ahead and do that. Um, so now what I want to do, uh, and this is very important, is I want to put my tires on today. I'll drive around tomorrow for a little bit, uh, probably 50K or so. Um, and then what I'm going to do is take my tires off, check this torque again. Okay, it's been two full days now since we uh, put on the wheel spacers. Uh, I've driven around a bit, but not a whole lot. Uh, so it's time to take off the tires and check the torque on the spacers. I'm also going to be putting on my uh, other tires at this point because it's super hot. out. These winter tires are starting to disintegrate um, in this weather. In fact, I can see a difference already in them. Um, so anyway, we're going to pull these off. I've already loosened these up, jacked the vehicle up. We're going to take off these. I've already actually checked the torque on all of them, and they're all pretty good. So let's power through this. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to check the torque on these. I've checked the torque on all four other ones. Uh, to do, sorry, all th four, three of the reels. So what you want to do is you want to set your torque wrench originally at 100, now to 95. We don't want to retorque. We just want to check that they haven't loosened.
Okay, all good. They all seem fine, no problems. So what we'll do is we'll put the new wheels on, perk them down. Since I had no movement in any of them, I'm going to give them probably about, uh, probably about two weeks, and I'll check them again. If there's no movement, I'll give them a month or two, check them again. If there's no movement, I'm probably good for a while until the next time I'm doing brake work or something like that. Anyway, that's uh, I think that's it. So thank you for enjoying the video. If you have any questions, just ask below. Thanks.